Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, we're working on a big rig right now. What we're running into is the driver has found he's having a little bit of a problem with the analog. He's getting some codes there. And we've traced this problem right down here to this front hub. Now, you get a little bit of wheel bearing play and the, the hub moves. You change the spacing between the ABS sensor and the, and the effect switch. So what happens is it sets a code. Good preventative maintenance anyway. Got in and out of wheel bearings on a big spindle. Different than a car, most of these have gear oil in them. We'll pull this hub off and that's why we have a drain pan. Get Ready? started, buddy. All right, well, now we got the hub off. Now we're getting to the busy part. I'm going to pull this oil seal out, take a quick look at that. We'll replace this. You don't want to reuse these things. And we'll pull out the bearing. And now I got who I have here is Roberto Carriedo from NTN Bauer. And these are the bearing manufacturers, and they make all these. And Roberto, taking a look at this bearing, what do you see on here? What you want to observe is the gouges that are, or the score marks that are on the rollers themselves. You can mm -hmm. actually feel that with your fingernail. What that's going to tell us is that hard particles got trapped inside and now are gouging the rollers, which is going to lead to premature failure. Yeah, you can see some gouges, some lines in there as well. So what happens, I guess, is when these bearings wear out, it causes excess play in the wheel. When that happens, you can see there's a tone ring around here. That has got a certain space between that and a sensor. This is for your anti-lock brake system. And what happens is that um, spacer, or if that space changes too much, then you start to get a fault code. And that's what's happened. These bearings are worn, aren't they? Absolutely. So we got to replace this, knock out the erase, put in new bearings, and then we can get this thing going. Okay, now we got our hub all cleaned up, ready to go. Now, what we've done is we've pressed out the old bearing race and put in new races. Now, they'll come with your bearings, so don't ever run a new bearing with the old race. That can cause you some problems. Now, Roberto, what's different about these bearings and some of the others that we use to install? Uh, well, there's a lot of sources that are overseas that are made as a through hardened steel, which is less or less resistant to impact or shock loading. With the premium US-made Bauer bearings, we case carburize the steel, giving us a longer life out of those bearings. Okay, so once you put those in, you got something else in here. What's this spacer for now? Tell me about that. The spacer is for preset wheel hubs. Uh, this goes in between the two races, and basically when the manufacturer sets these, they basically torque it down and it's set automatically. Now what we're doing is actually removing this and installing the bearings traditionally with setting it with a dial indicator. Okay. So that's something you want to be aware of when you're doing this installation. Now, you don't do any, you don't pack these with grease like we normally do on automotive bearings, do you? Well, you have to make sure what, whatever the manufacturer is using, that's what you're going to use. Mm -hmm. In this case, the vehicle we're using is using oil. Okay, so that's like a gear oil that we're going to be using. Correct. On. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll set these in here. Let it go like that. Always replace it with a new oil seal, and then you're in business. All right, what we do is we put this nut on now, and I've torqued it to 250 foot-pounds while we turn the drum. That seats the barons in the seal. Then we'll back this off. And now what's the final torque? You're going to do a 50 foot-pound torque, and then you're going to back it off half a turn. Half a turn, OK. So we go to, got our torque wrench set to 50 foot-pounds. Right there. 50 foot-pounds and a half a turn. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Full half turn, huh? Yep. How about that? That's about good right there. All right. Now, to make sure your preload's good, we take a dial indicator, stick it on the face of the drum, and set it over here to the spindle, and we're going to move it back and forth and see if we got the right tolerance. Okay, we put on the first nut, the big retaining nut. We torqued it to 50 foot-pounds, backed it off half a turn. Then we put in our locking devices, and then the outside nut, which is really what holds everything together. Before you check it with your dial indicator, you want to torque this to 200 foot-pounds. 200 to 300. 200 to 300 foot-pounds, okay? And then you knock over your locking tab. Before you do that, I like to check, make sure we got... We're looking for what, one to five thousand? One to five thousandths of an inch in play. Okay, let's give this a tug. See what we have. Right on the money. Yep. If you follow the directions, it works pretty good. Again, I'll knock over this lock tab. 
and we'll finish the job off with a brand new hub cover, gasket, hardware, put in the right amount of hub oil, this is the gear oil, this will be all set. We'll clear that ABS code, take this truck down the road and check it out. While I'm doing this, we're going to take a quick break, stick around, we've got a lot more here on Motorhead Garage.